So today we're going to talk about the radiative transport equation. Previously we talked about specific intensity and in that context we talked about a source on the sky with an emitting patch that covers an angular area d omega on the sky. And the radiation from that patch enters into a telescope with area dA here that's part of our telescope through which we look. And here we are an observer. And a ray that goes through us arrives with some energy over some time dt. And the other key fact about specific intensity is that if we look at the Fourier transform of the radiation we receive and plot the power we receive versus frequency, we're also talking about some interval in frequency. So specific intensity, which we'll call I sub nu, has units of energy per every unit you can imagine time, frequency, angular area on the sky, and the collecting area of our telescope. So now it's time to start putting things between this source on the sky and our telescope and examine what happens to the specific intensity as it crosses through some medium on its way to us. So now I'm going to redraw this picture where we have some emitting region from a source. And this time the radiation is going towards us in direction s hat, where s hat is a vector that points in the direction from the source to the observer, us, over here. And we're going to measure the distance from that source to us in the direction s hat, going a distance from zero to when it arrives at us, s. And here I've drawn s going all the way from the source to us, but in fact we may just be interested in a particular region between the source and us where some amount of emission or absorption happens. So now imagine we have some cloud between the source and us. And we'd like to know what happens to the specific intensity as it crosses through this cloud. And what do we end up observing of this emission, which came in on the back side of this cloud as I sub nu. And we want to know what do, what do we receive here on the other side of this cloud. And the answer is the radiative transport equation, which I'll write here. So this is the radiative transport equation. It says that the change in specific intensity with distance along this line is equal to an emission term, j sub nu, which in general can be a function of s, and the second absorption or scattering term, which is generally a function of the specific intensity at each specific point along the line. So the radio transport equation here isn't saying anything particularly exciting. It's just saying that any change in the specific intensity that we see as we travel along this line is a function of the emission that we pick up along this line minus the absorption of the emission as it passes through this medium. So let's examine a simple case where there is no emission. So first let's do the only absorption case. So we have no emission. So in the no emission case, our radiative transport equation simplifies to, and I'll carry the ds term onto the other side of the equation, the change in our specific intensity, I sub nu, is equal to the product of this alpha term, which is the extinction coefficient, the specific intensity at each point along the line, and the change in distance along the line. So the first thing that you can see from this, from writing the equation this way, is that the change in specific intensity must have the same units as specific intensity, which means that ds, which is a, a differential length along this line s, having units of distance, then our co extinction coefficient must have units of inverse length. So let's suppose our extinction coefficient is constant over s. That means it doesn't depend on s. Then the no emission case of the radiative transport equation is essentially saying that the change in I sub nu is equal to a constant times I sub nu when you take the derivative versus distance. So if the derivative with respect to s of i sub nu, which is a function of s, is equal to a constant times i sub nu, then the solution to this equation has the form that i sub nu as a function of s is equal to i sub nu at some start value times e to the minus alpha nu times s, which is the extinction coefficient times the length s. Essentially this is saying that if we put some specific intensity, some radiation through a cloud of absorptive material, 
there will be an exponential fall off in the intensity of that radiation because the attenuation that the radiation experiences at each point is proportional to the intensity of the radiation at each point. And it turns out it's useful to examine that exponent in a little more detail. We're going to define a variable tau sub nu to be the more general form of that exponent, which is the integral of the extinction coefficient that in general could be a function of s over the path s. And this variable tau sub nu we'll call the optical depth. So in the no emission case, the solution to the radiative transport equation is that I sub nu falls off from its initial value exponentially as a function of its optical depth. And if the optical depth tau sub nu is equal to 1, that means the intensity has been attenuated by a factor of 1 over e, which is about 37% of its original value. Tau sub nu is much greater than 1. We call this medium optically thick, which is to say that it's very hard to see through this cloud. We're losing information from the other side of the cloud. So in your experience, if something's optically thick, it basically means you can't see through it. And the flip side of that is if the optical depth is much less than 1, this is optically thin, which means that this medium is quite transparent. It's easy to see through it. So optical depth is a very powerful concept for understanding the radiative transport equation, particularly when we have no emission, where we're just considering absorption or scattering. In fact, you can re-express the rate of transport equation in terms of the optical depth, this time including the emission. So using our definition of optical depth, tau nu being the integral of the extinction coefficient along the line of sight, we have that d tau ds is just our extinction coefficient. So if we take our rate of transport equation here and multiply both sides by ds d tau, we get this equation where we have ds d tau on this side we can just turn this into the change intensity with respect to optical depth. And on the other side I'll use the fact that d tau ds is the extinction coefficient alpha sub nu so this is 1 over alpha to write j sub nu over alpha sub nu here and then our alphas cancel and we have our specific intensity. So this is useful because we can pretend that this ratio here, the ratio of the emission to the absorption, is a separate function which we'll call the source function. We'll define that to be S sub nu. So just to be clear here, we're discussing how the intensity changes with optical depth as we walk through this cloud. So we haven't said exactly how far we need to go through this cloud to get a certain change in optical depth. We're just saying that as we walk through here, and the optical depth changes as a function of s, we pick up emission at this particular frequency in the ratio of the emission from that cloud divided by whatever extinction we get inside that cloud. In addition, it's a function of the intensity at that point. Expressed this way, the rate of transport equation has a formal solution. I sub nu, the intense, specific intensity as a function of optical depth, is equal to the original intensity attenuated by e to the minus optical depth plus the integral from 0 to the current optical depth of the source function integrated over optical depth with a term here that accounts for the self-absorption which is to say that emission that happens in the back of the cloud gets attenuated by the medium inside the cloud in front of it just the same as the background light does. So again the radio transport equation breaks down into a term that accounts for the background light, and a term that accounts for the emission from the cloud, which is the glowing medium. And you'll notice that if we assume that the source function is constant, which is to say that the emission and the absorption don't change as a function of optical depth, then this equation simplifies to the intensity being the background light attenuated by the optical depth plus emission, which is phased in inversely with optical depth. So for the optically thick case, the intensity out of this cloud forgets about the background light and instead asymptotes to the source function. And for the optically thin case, the specific intensity is approximately the background emission plus a source term that goes linearly with optical depth. And those are the basics of the radiative transport equation.
the specific intensity of a ray as it passes through a medium is given by the attenuation of the background light, the, the intensity entering into that medium, attenuated by the optical depth of that e medium, plus a term that it picks up from emission inside of that medium, accounting for self-absorption, which again goes generally is phased in as 1 minus e to the minus op the optical depth. And the key constructs that we looked at were the optical depth, and we used optically thin and optically thick to talk about the cases when the background light dominates or when the glowing medium dominates. And we constructed a source function, which was the ratio of the emission to the absorption coefficient. And we can think of the source function as the intensity that the radiation asymptotes to as it passes through an optically thick medium.